All right, now welcome back. We're gonna take a look at something new and exciting, functions. So number six of the closure cones walkthrough, let's dive right into it. Oh, now this is not simply calling meditations. This is having some other expressions. Let's copy it over and take a closer look. All right, we'll paste it into light table. Once again, I'm gonna remove the call to meditations and just look at all these expressions individually. So, we've got these uh, defin expressions, defin square. Hopefully by the end of this, we'll know what these mean and what this, how this all works. Okay, functions are often defined before they are used. Okay, so we've got a function called multiply by 10. That looks familiar. Multiply by 10 was right up here. So maybe, oh, defin, define function. Okay, so maybe we're defining a function here. Multiply by 10. And it takes, what, one parameter? Is this how you say it? And what, is this the result? <clears throat> Times 10n. Okay, that kind of makes sense. If this is a multiply by 10 function and you give it a parameter, some parameter n, then you're going to simply return back n times 10. All right, that kind of makes sense. It's not too complicated of a function. Uh, so functions, uh, okay, multiply by 10 with a parameter 2. Well, just copying what we see above, it should be returning times 10 and the n, which is 2. Okay, great, we got that one to pass. Okay, we're starting to get a feel for something happening here with functions. Um, but they can also be defined in line. Okay, that's interesting. So look at this. We're not defining a function, we're just saying function. Mm, it's just an inline function. We're not giving it a name. So it's, a, it's some anonymous function with a parameter n and it returns back multiplying uh, blank times n. Well, <laughs> looks like we're defining the function and we're defining the result. So why don't we just say it's a, uh, a 10 times n function. And that would mean if we pass it the value 2, it should return back 20. So let's look at that one more time. We're not calling the function by name. We're passing not the name of a function here in the first parameter. The first parameter of, of this list uh, is a, an actual function that's just defined in line. It's an anonymous function. Um, Okay, so this, yeah, this big list you see here has two elements, a, a function and then the parameter two. So this is actually going to, when, you, when, when it's all wrapped up in parentheses here, uh, the ones that you see highlighted, that's going to uh, apply the given function uh, to the value two, or apply two to the given function. So yeah, there you go, you get the result 20. <laughs> Now you can also use an even shorter syntax. This is pretty cool with closure. Uh, it makes it very simple to write these anonymous functions. Um, it looks like you are, uh, we've got a function again defined in line here. And this is a different syntax. So we're, it's just a pound symbol followed by some expression. And the expression contains this percent sign. Uh, I think we can figure this out. So it looks like this is a syntax, this pound sign followed by some expression. This is a uh, syntax for a, a function that is just returning this expression. Uh, it multiplies uh, 15 times and the percent sign corresponds to the one parameter that this function takes. Okay, so let's say that we pass it, um, we could pass anything. How about a two? So this should be saying it'll multiply 15 times the parameter two, meaning our result is 30. Okay, we're kind of going through this fast, but let's see where we're going here. Um, short anonymous functions may take multiple arguments. Oh, cool, so not just a percent sign for one argument, but you can also kind of name your arguments uh, using this 
uh, name, uh, naming convention percent one, percent two, uh, and so on. So here is a function of three arguments, and it's just simply going to um, add them all together. So when we apply that function to four, five, and six, we get uh, the sum of four, five, and six, which is 15. Cool. One function can beget another. Oh my, oh my, my. Oh my. <laughs> what are we looking at? So this is a big expression and it all results in some value. What is this big expression? Looks like this big expression is nothing but a function definition, an anonymous function definition with no parameters. So when you wrap such a function in parentheses, it's going to evaluate it, meaning there's no parameters, so it's really just going to execute this, this expression. And what's this expression? This is uh, defining an anonymous function of two parameters and then passing four and five as the two parameters. So this guy, well, it's got a blank here, so we can make it do whatever we want. Why don't we just make it do um, addition again for simplicity? So this is an anonymous function with, with two parameters, and it simply adds the two parameters together. And it's being applied to the arguments four and five. And that whole thing, of course, is wrapped up in this anonymous function, uh, which is just simply executed with no parameters. So the, the, the result is just carried through. Um, so we get four and five added together. Now that's a complicated one. That, okay, sorry guys, that was, that was a little weird. Well, uh, let's keep going. Uh, maybe this will make some more sense. Higher order functions take function arguments. Huh, higher order functions. You might have heard that before and that sounds a little weird. But it's simply a, a higher order function is simply a function that takes a function as a parameter. And that's powerful. And we'll see why. So let's see, this, this is equal to 25. Oh my. <laughs> so we have to write, fill in the blank. And I'm guessing it's gonna be, we have to write an anonymous function. And this anonymous function expects one parameter which is itself a function. Oh my. Let's see what we can do here. So let's write an anonymous function. And let's say it takes uh, a parameter, we'll call it f, since it's a function, right? Now we have to write an expression that ends up returning 25. Well, okay, what is this anonymous function that we're taking as a parameter? It's a function that takes one parameter and, multi and uh, squares it. So what's the, that's 25 is, a, is the square of uh, five, right? F five squared. So if we're given this square function f and we apply it to five, I think we got our 25. Okay. Oh my gosh, that was weird. Uh, I think a lot of the cases we'll see in the future will make more sense. This is kind of convoluted, but let's roll with it. Okay, so, but they are often better written using the names of functions. Huh, 25 square. Uh, oh, I guess we can write the same thing that we did already. F, F, and five, right? So we take, we're expecting a function as a parameter, and we're gonna apply that function to the number five. So in this case, square was passed as our function, and we applied it to five, and it returns 25. Cool. Okay, that might have uh, been a little bit confusing. Some of the examples were convoluted, but this is a powerful concept, and I'm sure it'll make some more sense in the future. So stick around, and I'll see you in the next Closure Cone walkthrough video.